you were in many ways part of the Latin American pink tide. You served under Pepe Mojica as foreign minister in Uruguay in the early 2000s. Um, since that period, um, Argentina and Brazil have both moved towards right-wing governments. Ecuador's left-wing candidates scraped through uh, in the elections uh, earlier this year. Venezuela is obviously, as we've been discussing, going downhill. Uh, do you believe that the tide has now turned on the Latin American left that you were once part of? But this is not an ideological problem. I think what we are facing here is that uh, principles and values related to democracy and human rights are more important than anything related to ideology. I, uh, whoever wins the elections, if it is fair and has a right program, that's fine for me. And it should be fine for everybody in this community of states. And that will work should be only, po only pointing when the institutions don't work properly, when there is an alteration of the constitutional order or serious, serious violations of human rights like the Venezuelan case. Ava, you've met and advised many of the Latin American leaders from the so-called pink tide of left-wing leaders that were in power in the 2000s. A lot of them have lost power in Argentina, uh, in Brazil. They scraped through in Ecuador. And as we've discussed, uh, the situation in Venezuela is looking uh, precarious. Are we coming to the end of an era for that Latin American left, in your view? I think that beyond the leaders, and yes, there has been this sort of focus on these very charismatic, strong leaders, women and men, um, throughout this period in Latin America, which has been inspirational for many in the region. But at the same time, we have to look beyond that. I mean, there are large grassroots movements, social movements, political movements that have brought those leaders to power, that have maintained, you know, the achievements they've made. You know, I think that there may be some setbacks, but I don't think that this is the end of the left in Latin America. It w certainly wasn't the end when we had dictatorships throughout the region mm. in the 60s. 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now there was a comeback. So we have to see where things grow from today. And I think it's a new world. It's a multipolar world. And America, Latin America has played a huge part okay. in bringing that forward. Uh, Gabriel, how much of this is to blame on the leaders of the Latin American left themselves? Ava mentioned the kind of the role of leaders versus grassroots movements. How much is it to do with their lack of a long-term plan or vision, their failure to make their movements more than a one-man band? Uh, Dilma proved much less popular than Lula in Brazil. Uh, in Argentina, there was no viable candidate really to follow the Kirchner's. Uh, Evo Morales in Bolivia doesn't look like he has a successor either. Yeah, I mean, I think the insertion of these countries into the global capitalist system in a dependent manner is more important than leadership errors. Have leaders mismanaged the opportunities that they were given? Undoubtedly. I mean, I think in some ways Venezuela was doing a very, very good job until a few years ago when they had tremendous popular support um, and they were really maintaining a nice relationship between the government and the popular sectors and mobilized social movements. Um, with some errors, there's room for criticizing them. I think other governments in Latin America did worse on that front. Uh, Brazil comes to mind. I think if Gilma Rousseff had had a stronger relationship, if she hadn't gone down a path of austerity, which finance capital was very happy to have her go down, she might have been able to survive the parliamentary coup that removed her from power. Um, so I think certainly there's room for criticizing um, the leaders of the Latin American governments, but I think we have to do it in the context of history and in the context of the sort of brutal, dependent relationship to capitalism that these countries have been in. I just wanted to mention that, you know, despite the failings of some of the leaders in the region, both Ecuador and Bolivia have had tremendous growth economically, socially, and politically. Today, they are much better countries than they were before President Rafael Correa was elected in Ecuador in 2007 and, and Evo Morales was elected in Bolivia in 2005, 2006. So, I mean, I think that those are two countries where you've seen growth that so far is sustainable.